So a week on from harvest and this field has received its first double rake and you can see just a gentle tinge here. Volunteer rape starts to come up but overall uh, what we find is that these stalks will start to break up and by moving the surface around we can control slugs and I just wanted to show you what effect stubble rake is having as far as germination is concerned. So here we are on the headland and the stubble rake has been travelling in this direction. He's done a turn and he's obviously missed this triangle here. And as we pan back you'll just see how much thicker the volunteers are in this section as opposed to either side. And that's what we're finding. We can control volunteers and the idea is that we reduce the habitat for slugs. And we seem to be quite successful at it. This is, this is stubble raked, and this is not. And obviously this has been unmoved. Trash is about, I'd say about an inch thick. And this is what we're looking to control in here. Move this around keep the slugs under control. So welcome back to the rake field. It's a couple of days later. We've been through once again with a stubble rake. So I just wanted to show you the results whilst I was here. So as you can see, most of the cotyledons have now been destroyed. Uh, but what we're getting to the stage now where the rake volunteers are developing true leaves. This is a, a true leaf, whereas we take this little guy here. He's got the cotyledons either side and the true leaf is just coming through the middle. Let me zoom in for you. So you've got the cotyledons either side and the true leaf coming in the middle. Whereas this guy here, if I just separate these two plants, the true leaf is coming. As soon as the true leaf comes, the roots are getting stronger and it's, it's harder for us to destroy the roots with the stubble rake. As you can see, he's getting well established now. It takes his firm to pull them out. So what we like to do is try and keep this sort of uh, residue mat. This is what we call residue. Uh, residue mat to keep it moving. Now actually, as you put your fingers in, yeah, not only is there moisture, but it's quite cool. It, it, it's quite cool underneath whereas it's hot on the top and the one thing they point out in America is that uh, soil needs to be kept cool in order that the microorganisms stay alive if they if the soil gets too hot um, it kills your microorganisms so hence another reason to keep it covered but due to the slug pressure after rape we can't uh, establish a cover crop so we just keep this residue moving and try and stop the rape volunteers from establishing so that's our establishment technique morning everybody welcome back um, this morning I'm in a slightly different field still after all seed rape and we've been doing a little bit a little bit of a series of following up rape stubbles how we uh, cultivate them in order to mitigate our uh, slug pressure. And so uh, this field that I'm standing in has had our, probably has had three passes with the stubble rake and has now had a brief pass with the uh, Coon Optima. So if we have a look at the soil. So as we go down, the soil has got a occasional big lump in it like this but the depth is not very deep I use the um, my boot as a as a guide basically I'm looking for the top of the boot to be level with the soil so we're talking about thank you dog we're talking about a couple uh, two and a half two and a half inches there and actually we have got some strips of volunteers that are still, are still here and I, I just dug those up to see if it was the case that this bit hadn't been cultivated but it has still to the depth of a boot um, probably a tram line or something a little bit harder but 
this will be the limit of our cultivations and now we will come back with a stubble rake and further reduce the knobble size there could be a comment that i will if i stubble rake this the particle size will become too small and prone to slumping but in, that, in actual fact that's not an issue for us because we have a direct drill if it slumps back down to you know topsoil effectively smooth topsoil then that's a direct drilling system for us we're quite happy with that we can cope with it what it really means though is that for a slug it's a huge amount of pressure here you've moved it you've moved not only the residue where he's planted their eggs but it also you've uh, penetrated the top few inches where his tunnels and you've interrupted his tunnels and his places to hide so we're really working on a uh, integrated pest management basis on removing his habitat and his ability to breed okay but there is one slight issue with this field that I wanted to share with you so this field is a bit of an L shape and behind me there here the field kinks round around the corner and away from us now he's obviously cultivated this side of the field and then gone down the far end and you can see the gateways at the far end and that's what he's done is he's left the cultivator in and as he goes back down the field now I don't know if the camera will pick it up but it's quite a uh, furrow developed by the Coonoptima I would say it is four to six inches high that runs all the way down the field back to the gate now on the basis that every seed gets a, the same chance you can't have a six inch difference in depth so fortunately we are planning to come back here with a stubble rake otherwise that would become a bit of an issue we did trial a kelly harrow a couple of years ago and that really was an exceptional machine for achieving a level seed bed this field of course was the one that struggled with flooding and as a result some of the rape died off and left us with patches um, and I just wanted to show you one thing that I am concerned about so down here on the ground we have a patch of straw residue it's about six inches deep perfect slug, slug habitat and so that will be needed to be moved around usually we come through with a culti press next to level this out and bash it down a bit um, if you're very friable at the moment i'll be looking to try and get in here with the stuck with the culti press as soon as possible so one of the le learning lessons from last year was cover crops um, diversity of cover crops is very important um, so we went for a uh, off the shelf uh, high diversity mix last year the experienced people say ask yourself what you're trying to achieve before you choose your plants so in this case it's very simple it's uh, having a living root in the ground trying to get the root exudates going try and keep your uh, bacteria and fungi going within the soil keep everything alive whilst you wait for the establishment of your cash crop so it's relatively simple objectives uh, this field for example doesn't have any compaction i think generally we've been quite gentle on our soils this year even though the winter has been quite wet so i'm not looking to you know get anything deep rooting to alleviate any problems but we are looking for diversity so how can we achieve diversity cheaply fundamentally if we put our direct drill on uh, to plant a crop we are talking about 60 pounds a hectare just to pull the drill through plus another 30 quid for the seed if you're getting a really uh, diverse mix which comes out very expensive so last year we grew a field of buckwheat uh, which we've put through our cleaner and we've bought in some mustard uh, we find mustard a joy to grow uh, in the fact that we put it on the ground 
and it responds straight away. Does it seems to be relatively resistant to pests and very good active growth profile. So we've decided to just uh, spin our cover crops on this year and roll them in. So this field has had one pass with a stubble rake and then we've gone in and just spun these on. So it was quite interesting calibrating the spinner, but we managed to do this. So this is a buckwheat um, with the red stalk here. And I guess this guy here, he's a mustard with a plain stalk here. So they're really romping along. I would expect the buckwheat to make it to um, maybe a foot and a half, just below knee level. Um, and it will die off in the frost and the mustard could make it to sort of waist height if not higher and this this is a field of wheat last year it was rape so it's going into a spring crop off the top of my head I can't remember which but probably uh, flexi wheat and so there's quite a good window now for the crop to the cover crop to grow and establish.